Howdy, howdy, y'all. Uh, starting a little early today, but we just had a wonderful, wonderful raid from Jason and friends. Thank you all so much for coming through. We're excited to have you. Uh, welcome to Some Antics. Uh, if you're not familiar, Some Antics is a weekly stream where I bring on guests from around the web development and web design industries to teach something about building great user experiences for the web with a focus on accessibility and core web technologies. Today, I am joined by Travis Wade Mayer. Travis, hello, welcome to Semantics. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to have you on. We have been friends for a while, thanks to a uh, Discord server that we're both in. I'll put a, a link to that in the uh, chat there. Um, interesting, does my bot not work? There we go, that works. Uh, but it's so a little delayed. <laughs> yeah, had, had to get the, the right command, apparently. Um, but yeah, so for folks who haven't seen you around, Travis, um, would you like to give yourself a bit of an introduction? Yeah, well, I'll tell why I'm in Fables. Uh, um, yeah, no, I'm uh, Travis Waithmare. I, I the creator of the Bedrock Layout Primitives Library. If you go over to bedrock-layout.dev, um, and... It, it's there's different ways to think about it. the foundational layout primitives. I also kind of sometimes call it the low dash of layout. It's all about trying to create compositional layout and how to how to divide up your layout into on the the web into like these composable parts. Um, and I also blog over at non uh, dash tri non dash traditional dot dev. You'd think I would know how to say my own URL. Um, and yeah, that I just I just love web dev, really love the front end of the front end. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of fun that that's a thing now, the front end of the front end. But anyway, yeah, I just do that. I usually I tweet and uh, every Wednesday, I typically try to every Wednesday, I, I, I stream live on Twitch as I work on the Bedrock Layout Library this week. We're, I'm actually going to be spending the tomorrow's morning stream porting over Bedrock to Solid JS for the Solid hack that they're doing. Good deal. I am putting a link to your stream in the chat. My bot is uh, apparently incredibly wonky uh, today, so I need to figure out what is going on there. But um... and, and Anthony in the chat, like. Yeah, I've been on a couple podcasts, but one of them definitely was FS Jam. Mm -hmm. So if you want to check out previous conversations that I've had on Bedrock, go check that out. Absolutely. So yeah, let's uh let's go ahead and start sharing streams so we can start uh, showing off some links. So um, there we go. Um, Y'all, I've already dropped Travis's uh, Twitter in the account. Go follow him. Go show him the semantics love. Additionally, Travis blogs at non-traditional dev. Um, this is really great stuff. I, I really actually admire uh, how well you're able to keep up your, your cadence on how often you um, blog, because that's just never been something I've been able to do. Um, there's really, really thoughtful things on there. One blog post of yours that I absolutely love is uh, one about finding technical communities uh, where you bring up this the server that we're in. I'm wondering, oh, here it is. Um, I'm a big fan of, of this one, so I'm going to recommend folks give this a read. Um, and yeah, so today we are uh, using Bedrock Layout, uh, which is, you described it as a layout primitives library. Um, so yeah, can you kind of go into depth into what this is and why people might use it and what your philosophy was when putting this together? Yeah, 100%. That, and I'm totally aware that like primitives is this like overused like term in the technology. We're always talks about we're building our primitives and my primitives. And so I totally get that. I'm like totally encroaching on the namespace here, but I think it, it's, it speaks to what I'm trying to do here. And I, Hey, I'm not the first person to ever like try to think of layout in this way. What I, what I really try to do is just take everything I've learned and put it in a library and, and I'll give some context of where this all started. Um, my previous position, I was actually like the lead of our design system team. And we were tasked to build a new design system from scratch. They used to have this kind of amalgamation of Bootstrap 3 with some other styles. And it had grown to the point where they were kind of using Bootstrap 3, but not really anymore. 
anyway, like, so they're like, let's just start over. We're going to build a new one. We're going to do it in React as well. And the, for me, like, the one thing about like React that's really great, it's got this great compositional model. You compose all, it's all about like starting from the smallest and building things up. But then like when we do layouts on the web, we tend to like do it like how we were taught back in like 1999 when CSS was all about, let's start from the very top and let's think about like all the general styles and we'll, we'll work down. They kind of have two different like conflicting mental models in a way. Because you start like from your most general styles first and then you work down to your specific, but like components, you start specific and then you build up from there and you get to that general. Anyway, so it was one of these things that made it really sometimes hard for me to like really get things working right. Cause every time you try to like refactor things out, all of a sudden your layout gets poor. That makes and sense. Then, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so through that and through different things, like one, I have to say like probably my biggest inspiration that I've learned a lot was Hayden Pickering, um, has, has like great content about like using, um, compositional layout. Um, other ones, um, it would definitely be Jen Simmons as well. Uh, just through learning different things from them, like really understood the concept, of, like how, how do we actually take, break our layout down from like these one-offs, like, for example, like if you're going to build a card, we typically, what, like create like a card class, right? And then we just throw everything to do with that, that styling into the the card class including the layout but we're solving that same layout problem in more than just our card class sometimes we're saving sol solving those exact same things in different parts of our app so it's like how do we take that layout and move it into something reusable and composable and and through those different resources that's eventually kind of what created that i created this in our design system at, at R1. I then wanted to like make it um, open source and I went through the bureaucracy there and they're like, no, we're not gonna open source our design system. That, you know, it's just the same like corporate kind of thing. They, they don't understand the benefits of like just putting it out there and, and acknowledge not necessarily that other people are gonna be using it, but just writing in the open and the benefits that gives you. And so kind of, this was like just before a Christmas break, I was just kind of like, have you heard of like, I guess, revenge driven development? Okay. <laughs> In a way, I kind of had that mentality where I'm just like, well, if I can't open source art this, I'm going to make an open source library that does all this stuff. And I just totally started like taking everything that like I was building with what me and my team were building. I don't want to take all the credit there because we were building it together, but we, that we built and we, I brought it over to this library called the bedrock. I decided I wanted to do it properly. So I needed a logo. So I went on Fiverr and said, Hey, I want a logo. This is what I'm going to call it. <laughs> this is what I got. Um, and, and the rest is history. Awesome. And so bedrock began as a react component library but lately you've been going through this journey to turn it into a css framework i understand yeah 100 percent. that's it and so it, it's not just built on react it's also built using style components because that that was a decision we made since at r1 because we knew all new things that were also going to be in this design system we had also adopted style components as a technology stack as well. So A, that was a decision that got ported over, but also if you're gonna double down, I like the kind of um, opinions that style components lets me do when building that in React. But that means you have to have a React app with style components. And if you can't have both of those things, then you can't use my library. And I started branching out wanting to use Bedrock in other things. I want to play around with Svelte. I want to play around in, in just plain HTML. And it's like, now I can't do all my fun compositional layout kind of things. Cause that's all sitting there in this library that requires not just React, but React and style components. Mm. So I started like, okay, if I'm going to move away, I, I'm not gonna, I don't want to keep trying to port everything over to view. And I don't want to create, 
this is after I'm already going to port this over to solid, I decided. <laughs> but like, I don't want to make a new version of this for every single thing that I might be interested in, just because I'm curious. And so it's like, if I'm going to make an alternate kind of parallel version that I need to keep in sync, I got to go back to the, the basics and go back to CSS. And so ultimately, I created a CSS only version. You can find it right there on the website if you scroll down um, on the left hand side. Yeah, CSS only. This is the uh, this is the kind of I guess landing page for the CSS framework version of it. Um, you... And and my requirements for it were like I still want that like component like feel where like I, I'm creating a component, I'm adding props, but like it still needs to be like CSS, pure CSS only, not have any other dependencies other than just bringing in whatever CSS you need. And that's really where the AVO method um, that Chantastic has really promoted has really made it do exactly that. Um, for those who are unfamiliar, I've just put the, the link in the, the chat, but AVO is uh, Michael Chan's um, approach to CSS styles that really leverages data attributes. Um, namely namely having a bunch of like uh key value pairs in your like data attribute markup um it's really really worth a read i put the, the link in the chat um so i'm i'm super excited to see that that has been a strong inspiration for the the css version um okay so i think let's dive into starting to to use this um you've given me a code pen uh which i appreciated off of off of the bat because already like there's at least five different dad jokes like in sight here um and so yeah uh can you kind of walk us through what we're going to be building today yeah so i decided like, i gotta make let's make a landing page let's make the thing that like every dev has to build in their life which is a landing page to something doesn't me matter if you're building an internal tool you always have to build some type of landing page to something um and so I decided to create this fictional website called the database, which now I have to go make this website. Yes. Like, as soon as you name it, you have to create it. So, so that is, hopefully in the that, future. That is unironically how some antics came about. Like, I came up with the name. I'm like, <laughs> this is too good. I have to do something with it. And now we're here a year later. So... Maybe we'll open sort of this. We'll put this out in the community. Maybe like everybody over in semantics can help me build the database. And we'll 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 build it like with eleven D or something like that. That would be awesome. But the um yeah, so it's just like sometimes like blog like kind of experience where you can have have a header, some navigation, and some like cards, just things that you see like on every single landing page. And I've styled everything on here, but we haven't laid things out. And so that's where we're just going to jump. Okay. Um, I also grabbed ev everything on here is pretty much styled mostly with the uh, open open props. Yes. Um, I just played around with this for the first time two weeks ago on a stream I had with um, Brittany about Svelte. Let's see if... Yes, it does work. Thank goodness. Um, I'm now gonna just like bite my bite my fingers every time, uh, bite my nails every time uh, I I use the bot because something about it is wonky. But uh, yeah, so for folks who haven't seen this, this is um, Adam Argyle's CSS uh, tool framework. Perhaps uh, it basically gives you a bunch of um, CSS custom properties with some lovely sensible defaults that you can use to just uh, assemble a look for any given element. Yeah, and, and especially here where, like, I, I didn't want to think about <laughs> styles, but I needed something that, like, made sense that I could just build off of. This was perfect. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and so I, I, and I've used open props for other resources for just that, like, when it's like, I don't want to think about, like, what styles or what color choices I have available. Let's just get something going. This mm -hmm. is 100, a great tool for that. Cool. So, uh, hey, thank you for the follow, M. Huggins. Super appreciate having you around. Um, 
Yeah, so let's go ahead and I guess dive into it. So this has been totally uh, uh, totally unlaid out, as you mentioned. Um, everything just kind of exists in a, a column, regardless of actual hierarchies. So what are we going to do first? So first of all, I, let's start with the whole experience in, in general. Like, this looks great on, on some of these kind of like medium level screens. But if you were to put this, stretch this out onto like a 4K screen, like the website starts looking wonky really quickly having having like such a huge, huge screen. Usually the pattern you want to see here is you, you want to like clamp your content eventually, like right in the middle and, and let kind of the outside grow. So um, what we're going to do is to, to do that, let's wrap everything. Let's put it in a div. And, All right. And on that div, well, I'll let you catch up here. <laughs> yep. Sorry, I had to uh, send a quick chat real quick. Okay. So, yep, we, we got ourselves a div. And then we're going to use the center component for this. And so to do that, we just put in data dash bedrock uh, dash center. Okay. Data bedrock center. Um, and it's worth calling out. You've already imported the oh, no, files. It's, it's not equal center. Sorry. Data bedrock dash center. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Yeah. So now every, this div is now the equivalent of like having a center component. Like if you were if the, in the React version, you would actually have a center component. This is the center. And if you want to, yeah, exactly. So this is the React version. And if you go down below, there's center.css. In here? On the left-hand side, under CSS only, oh, just see. focus on that. Got it. OK. So the what we want to do is we want to clamp it and use this max width. So this is a custom property that we can do um, just with the inline style. So deal where is here here you are okay so that would be style equals and then we pass it uh max width and this could be any csf length so if you want to just put in one that's fine or there's some size um properties that bedrock also comes with oh okay um and so you can yeah. do var um site dash dash size dash large okay and then you'll see as you grow, it will it will hold that off there. And then, but it will still, as it shrinks, it will still take up the entire width. But eventually, it will stop growing at a certain point and center right there on the screen. Makes sense. Very cool. And then I'm guessing there's we we could do like small. And that's probably yeah, clamping Correct. it to roughly phone size. It seems okay. And that's good, like. Because sometimes you just want some arbitrary sizes that you know will look good, but then other times you want to be like very like fine grained. So the max width lets you do what whatever is, works out for the scenario you want it. Or you could use somebody else's if we want to use open prop sizes. We you can definitely use open prop size um, size as well, or bring your own. So okay, very cool. So that's the first thing. Next thing like. Your typical like landing page, you you always gotta have your big hero, your big like well, the thing, the first thing that everyone sees. Yes. Um. We're good, so we're gonna kind of skip over that figure, the that logo up in the front. We're gonna come back to that. Okay. But what kind of that pattern that you want is you usually want this uh hero. Oftentimes it takes up like a variation of like the view height, and then either like a hundred percent or maybe fifty percent, and then. You usually want some content like centered vertically inside of there. So to do that on the header, let's go ahead and add a data dash bedrock dash cover. Dash cover. Okay. Yep. And just that alone should make it automatically take up the entire um, view height. Um, in theory, it should. In theory, okay. Does it need a <laughs> value? It shouldn't. Just by itself, it should automatically take up a hundred. 
view heights by default. Maybe they might need a refresh. They might have. Yeah, let's save this and and refresh and see what it does. Um, doesn't seem to be doing anything. Let me pull up the uh the final version that I made just to make sure I don't need to put it on the right component. It should be on the head of data bedrock cover. The fun of live TV, right? Yeah, oh, live always, TV. always. Let's, uh, oop. I promise I can find, there we go. Okay. So. Yeah, cover.css. Okay. Uh, hold on, let me, let me try to bump up our audio because we're getting some uh, feedback about that real quick. Um, <laughs> always the, the trouble of uh, streams. Um, yeah, it, okay. I, I don't know that I'm going to be able to bump it up anymore. Um, sorry about that, y'all. I'll try to speak louder. There we go. Um, okay, so I'm... I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Where are we? Where are we going? Cover. So cover. Cover. Dot CSS. And then it says uh, cover centered. Oh, there's there's two parts to it. So there should be cover and then cover centered. So there's the up at the very top. Yeah, data bedrock cover. Okay. And that's what we have in there, right? Yeah. Okay. Um. So let's check this. When in doubt, check the inspector. So, column, uh, min height default to 100 viewpoint, uh, viewport height. Okay. Well, this, this might be a bug somehow they got in there, but it should be in there without the min height. All right, well, let's... So let's go ahead and just add that min height. Yeah, here. just in case. Okay. So... That that's a custom property that you would set. The same thing, the max width kind of mentality is like. There we yeah, go. so there we there we go. Now, in a lot of cases, the one hundred percent view height is great, but I kind of like the fifty view height. So let, let's go ahead and change it to that. Sounds good. Personally, now, and then we kind of looked at that. Uh, already there's the part that you usually want some content some top something below but then you want that that content that gets centered vertically and so let's wrap our h1 and our p tag let's put it go ahead and put it in a div you got it and then let's put on there data bedrock cover centered you already saw that on the other one Okay. And you're going to see that centers it. Now, oftentimes, it, we want things centered horizontally as well. So what makes this great is that we can also add the other data attribute that we've already learned about, which is the data bedrock center. Okay. And that will automatically... So we can do that compositional thing. I know there's ways... Ways to do this, like if you were to go deep into it and with Flexbox, do things in one line, and that's cool. But like, what I really like about the compositional models, like you're you're only thinking about one thing at a time, and you can like erase those opinions really easily. So if mm. you're like, no, we really don't want this horizontally centered anymore. Let's erase that. Or this section, we want to move some. We and you can just start moving things around and make that decision. And so. Yes, yeah, sometimes that forces you to maybe be a, a little bit more verbose, mm -hmm. but oftentimes, at least the way I work, verbose usually tends to be easier to maintain than than terse. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Welcome, so, Nino. Good great. to have you. All right. Um, yeah. So, is there any more you wanted to do for this kind of cover section? Um, no, not for that. Does there does anybody have any questions in the chat on that? I just want to make sure we're not ignoring. I haven't seen any yet, but yeah, if y'all have any questions, please feel free to drop it in the, the, the chat and we'll get back to that as soon as possible. Um, awesome. So another like common layout pattern is the putting one thing next to another, right? <laughs> it's like 
the infamous like how do we put two things next to each other mm -hmm. and part of the reason like it's because it's never just as simple as putting two things next to each other usually you want to put two things next to each other and then something else so yeah <laughs> anthony's uh, like i don't have a question but the project title is amazing <laughs> the database mm -hmm. there's I, um, i'm also now and just, i wore an appropriate shirt for today incredible so. i also just love like the alt text travis wait there comma a dad <laughs> well like it needs to be appropriate for what's going on mm -hmm. i can't just put my picture i need to make sure it's apparent why my <laughs> picture's in this i mean here's the thing <laughs> it is a parent <laughs> oh man see this we need to create this mm -hmm. this is going to be made now anyway so Right now we have this aside and we we have a main content. We want to put the aside next to it and because it's kind of like our navigation. And then we want the uh the main content to flow to the to the right. Okay. So yeah. first of all, let's go ahead and wrap the aside and the main in its own div. Okay. I'm not gonna spend a Maybe whole lot of time with the indentation or anything like that. So uh aside and the main. Yeah, they're in a div. There we go. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the the inline because uh, what this is going to allow us to do is we can we can put things in line, but then it has a, a capability where we can say, hey, I want one part of the content to stretch and fill, and the rest to just fill fill up its um, just how much it would normally take up it auto auto fill like. So if you go, if you want to go look at the uh, docs there, um, the part we're looking at is there's two parts. There's the stretch and stretch index. Okay. Um, On the left-hand uh, side, there you see, yeah, stretch. Okay. So there's there's a couple ways we can do this. We can either say, hey, let's we want the start to stretch or we want the end thing content to stretch. Or you can provide a, or we can say all. We just want them all to stretch and just fill up equally. Okay. And then there's an also, if you, if you just want to get a little bit more fine grained, um, you can stretch up to, uh, if you go to stretch index on the left hand side, you can, is the, I need to change the, the sizes here on the documentation because now you can't see it anymore that it's stretching because the, uh, the window size mm. changes here. And so you can't, they actually take up the full width now. But okay. the, this help there's a stretch I don't, who knows kind of weird that's not doing it but yeah okay, you can yeah. say i the other oh yeah there we go you can see like hey i want the zero at the item to stretch or the first or the second and so as of right now i've only added like five or so of these okay yeah the first yeah the first five because that's typically like where i've run into a problem but if if anyone feels like they need to be able to stretch the tenth item, like I'm totally open to a PR and extending that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because at a certain point you just run into it's just impossible to stack enough things. Like what the bootstrap grid had like twelve or sixteen columns, but you're not yeah. supposed to like put things in all of those columns. Um, there's only how many so people much... were ever doing column one? <laughs> this was only one column, like made twelve individual yeah. items. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to use that stretching capability. So if okay. we go data bedrock and stretch. inline. Oh, inline. Yes. 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 And, and then it's a stretch property. So we're going to do equal. And then it's stretch colon. And we'll, let's do n because we only have the two items. Okay. So this means that the one, like the last item in the, the list will expand yes. as much as it needs or like as much as it can okay exactly um, um hey, we've got alex trost in the chat um who says gosh i love seeing these kinds of solutions to css this is really exciting travis agreed also alex thank you so much for resubscribing i really appreciate it yeah and by the way like alex has been awesome he great some made some great feedback to the website if you go back to the 
the homepage there. Yes. Um, I just want to call this out. There's, if you go scroll all the way to the bottom, on the on the landing page, yeah, you'll see Alex, Michael Chan, a few people who've made some significant contributions that GitHub doesn't recognize, or there's just no way to like put it in there. I made sure to to call them out. Um, Anthony made some major contributions to help me get like the tutorial part working really well. Mm -hmm. um, HTT Pete there, he's the second person. He was he used to work over at Clavio, and they've adopted Bedrock as part of their design system. And he was a major person over there who did a lot of feedback and helped me understand what they needed to make it more general purpose. And so, and then <laughs> the individual in the middle, his name's like escaping me all of a sudden. But I met him at when I spoke at React India on composing layouts in React. And he uh, he basically like read through and fixed all the grammar on like most of the pages on this in the doc site. So. It's amazing. I'm gonna reply anyway. to anyway real quick. Um yeah, um anyways, yes. So let's uh I guess dive back into here. So the So right yeah. now we're this is looking great, but you'll notice like you can probably assume I'm using Flexbox under the hood. And Flexbox by default stretches everything. But I kind of found like I don't usually want things to stretch by default, and I'm usually like overriding this but in this case we do want that that left hand column to stretch all the way down so to do that in that same text where we did stretch end if we do a space we can throw in a line colon stretch okay nice and now we can get that oh that's sharp So it really gives a, what I really like about like this AVO method is like if, if I had decided to like do the Tailwind style, and this is not a knock on Tailwind, but like if we throw everything in the class name, eventually like it gets really hard to see these class names can start to get lost. What I really like about yeah. these AVO is like everything related to the inline, for the most part, unless it's something like that requires like input, like like um, the max width or the max in line. And we're going to see the gutter prop here that you need something like that, some type of input from the developer using it. Mm -hmm. It's really great because it kind of forces everything that's related to be together. Yes. And then you're like, oh, wait a minute. I don't want the stretch end. You know exactly where to find it. You have to go mm -hmm. find the that inline um, data attribute and go remove it. Yeah. And, and, it's also like everything stays tightly coupled without um with, with without needing to be exceptionally verbose because i could imagine and i'm just gonna put this in like comments here like i could imagine that like uh you would have if you were to do this with like a, a class-based css framework you could do something like oh bedrock inline stretch and also the class bedline uh, bedrock inline stretch and bedrock align stretch right and then like what happens if someone applies stretch end without applying all the other classes because they want the rule like it's just not as tightly coupled and so things become um just really really verbose in a way that uh maybe creates like less predictable results exactly and then the other thing like when you're and you'll notice like this with with Tailwind, and once again, I'm not knocking on Tailwind. I think it's really great. But you have to kind of learn what the acronyms mean. and Because otherwise, you're going to have this class names that become like a paragraph if everything was as verbose as you wrote it. Mm -hmm. So it would have been like B-I-S. And you have to kind of learn what B-I-S means. Yeah. <laughs> you know, things like that. Anyway, so yeah, this is what I really like about this solution and the AVA method. And it just really is made that same like composable feel like just seamlessly work in css all by itself thank you for the resubscription michael chan all right now the other thing about this though is like this is looking great on like a larger screen but now how do we make this more responsive we go tighten that up that starts to look like really 
crappy. Yes. So like a typical thing we want to do is we want to then like move this over to like a stacking type of layout. Mm -hmm. So what's really cool about the inline is we can provide an inline style a property called the switch app property. Okay, so is that inside inline here? So not in there, but like as a style. Oh, I see. Is, yeah, and we're going to do dash dash switch at. Switch at, and this is all camel case, right? Yeah, correct. And now we can provide some type of value where we're like, once we get to a certain width, I want to switch to a stacking Ooh, layout. Ooh, okay. So um, I'm trying to remember what I put. Um, I'll put in something in like 500 version. pixels for now. Um, and we'll see if this works. Um, oh, does it have... Oh, wait. There we go. Okay, so I'll, I'll put in something bigger than that, but... Okay. Um, yeah, let's say switch at, like, 800. We'll see if this does anything. Let's see if I remember. It's a little shorter than I would expect. Like, that doesn't look like 800 pixels to me, but okay. That seems like it didn't update to your 800 pixels. It's like we have a lag or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um. And that's right. So besides the space ones, we also have some size values. Okay. And so we can do, instead of 800 pixels, let's do uh, var size dash medium. All right, and then let's see if that is going to work. Okay, so shrink it down. Something about this seems not quite working. Let's, let's look at the, the markup again. Um, let's see what's going on here. So let's chat. Uh, could it be that the gutter doesn't exist yet? Oh, yeah, that was the other. That's the reason why. <laughs> Sorry. I'm totally skipping over, like, totally ignoring my own notes here. Hey, you're good. So, yeah, the with the inline, there, um, you can also, we can also set a gutter here. Right. And in fact, that, I'm going to write that down as a note that that breaks if uh, you don't have a gutter, because we need, we need a default value for that gutter. Anyway. Mm. See, this is what's great about like using it. It's with you is you can break this, and I can see how to fix this on a future stream. Absolutely. <laughs> so let's uh, fix that. Switch ad breaks. Okay. Um. So for the for this gutter, like oh, typically you don't want things like always bumped up against each other. You want some type of gutter in between it. Okay. And so let's add on the inline a gutter, um, not, yeah, as a right there. And where are my notes? So I'll, I'll yeah, just I, try like 2M just to see what happens. See if I, hey, okay. So that works. And then uh, that seems to pop over. Okay, cool. And if I had said that this was like 800 pixels again. Now that we have a working gutter, does this do the thing? Um, hard to tell. However. Oh, yeah. For this one, it's supposed to be zero by default. That's why. Let's put the, the gutter zero. That's. Okay. Oh, yeah. I know why. I I just realized why. Like, I'm also using the app property. I, I just totally realized why my demo is like doing this and not. Um, and it's not working for you is because I'm also using like the properties, but that's not fully supported across the browsers. Okay. <laughs> but Safari is apparently like using that. I like oh. so I'm, under the hood. I have this app property, and I'm defining getters has a default value of zero pixels. So if you don't define it, it will have a zero pixel. Mm, so. Okay. Well, yeah, let's go ahead and add that. Uh, does sorry, that like yeah. does that switch over? No, that should be like switching. Uh, it does switch over at a certain point. Um, does this this looks too small to be a medium though? I would guess. That's crazy. 
Um, okay, let me try, instead of zero, let me explicitly give it a unit, maybe? We'll see. Um, could just be that this is a discrepancy between the browsers still, but... Okay. Interesting. That's what you... If, if, you re, if we refresh the page, like... Because, yeah, that's way too small to be a medium. <laughs> what is the medium? All right. All right. Oh, you've got me curious now. Yeah, I know. 100%. And if anyone's curious how this is being done, like there was a great hmm. talk by Hidden Pickering, like Flexbox Arbit Albatross. Oh, I totally forgot the the full name of the talk. It was just a, it, but it was a fun, like informative, fun talk that the way Hayden Pickering does. So we have the. These all look defined. Um. Size medium is that defined? Yeah. Yeah, that's defined. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. What if I'm I'm gonna try to pull this up in Safari and and see if if that changes how things look. Um. So let's see. All right. Yeah. Um, oh, hello. It, uh, it's giving me a little Cloudflare warning. Um, I am yeah, human, I that with code allegedly. All right. Uh, so anyway, I don't know that we're going to necessarily get uh, that part um, going. Yeah. But, so the idea with yeah. that, though, is like this should be able to switch, and we can oh also... Uh, sorry, I just want to uh, shout out Kevin Powell. Uh, Kevin, thank you so much for the raid. Hello, friends. Um, today... So, first of all, welcome to Semantics. Semantics is a uh, weekly Twitch stream where I bring on guests from around web development and web design to teach something about building great user experiences for the web uh, in a hands-on way with a focus on accessibility and core web technologies. Since you're coming through from Kevin's group, uh, I'm sure that uh, this is the kind of stuff that y'all will be into. Today, I'm joined by Travis Waithmere. Travis has built a wonderful CSS framework and component library called Bedraft Layout. Um, and today we are seeing how um, how this works, how uh, how this is built. Um, we're playing around with the CSS framework specifically, um, just to see how you can lay out a whole page um, using just some really really solid CSS primitives. So uh, welcome, raiders. We are so so excited to have you here. Thank you so much, uh, Kevin, uh, for the the raid. Um, hopefully, and you can tell me if this is true. Hopefully there was a shower of T-Rex emojis. Uh, there might have been so many um, that maybe it was hard to tell uh, because there should have been exactly 101 T-Rexes, which is the better version of 101 Dalmatians. Um, so I, I want to see yes. the Disney streaming plus spinoff. 101 T-Rexes? Um, but uh, welcome, Kevin Powell and friends. It's great to have you. Uh, we are currently having what seem to be some cross-browser issues uh, based on laying out different elements side by side. Um, Trost is right. Cruella would have had a tougher time, 100%. Um, if anyone I can... don't know. Cruella is pretty strong. <laughs> I think would have tamed all 101. All 101 T-Rexes? <laughs> you underestimate the power of a T-Rex. <laughs> uh... So yeah, let's go ahead and let's just go on sure. and just chalk this up to uh, me creating this in a single browser over the weekend and yeah. not testing this across multiple browsers. Hey, yeah, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put a link to the pen in the chat. Um, if y'all can find um, what might be happening and, and find a solution, feel free to propose it here. And if it's something that is an issue with Bedrock Layout itself, um, Travis welcomes pull requests uh, and one hundred percent. So, yeah, um, let's let's get uh, some sleuthing eyes on this. I think, um, so, but yeah, in the meantime, let's move on. What do you want to do next? So let's uh, jump over to the. I said we've ignored these images. Um, yes, they're all wrapped in a figure. But let's uh, let's start off with that that first one. What we can do that's now fully supported really well 
is let's let's get some aspect ratio on on these images. This first one, the one up at the top, um, if we wrap that in a data bedrock frame. Okay, can I apply that to the figure itself? To the or figure, I... yeah. Okay. And it's designed to be actually wrapping the image itself and not necessarily put right on the image. Because you'll see it went away because what it, what it does is it, it takes the image in it and it absolutely po positions it inside and, and tags it to that frame. So now that frame by itself has no inherent width or height. And oh, okay. so we could go in and add a width and a height and that, that the image's underlying aspect ratio won't change and it will continue and it will just crop where it needs to depending on how where we set it. Or we can also use ratio at this point and set a, like a one-to-one -one or whatever. So in this case, we want a one-to-one -one ratio because we want it to be a square. Okay. So we would set that with um, a custom, uh, not a, yeah, stop. Thank you. Um, a CSS variable, a, custom, a CSS custom property. That's the word I was looking for. And so it would just be ratio. And you provide it like one um, slash one. You got it. And with no, yeah, perfect. And the uh, the class logo already is doing the uh, border radius. So you can see it's cutting off all that white space automatically for us. But now we, if we, we have something that's a one-to-one -one ratio down below with my image. Um, and that's in the aside. But I, I don't want that in this case. I want more of a portrait ratio. But okay. like the image has this like square. So let's go ahead and give it a ratio. All right. Um, do I need to add that frame? Um, oh, yes. Yeah. But okay. we still need to add the frame. Sorry. Cool. Just, thanks for reading my mind. <laughs> hey, you're good. I'm just going to copy and paste the frame and the style from uh, the first one here. And we can change the style here. Okay. So not one to one, which is a square, but uh, what ratio should we use instead? So what I really like is the, the open props has a, what's called a portrait ratio. And he has some re really great ratios in there. So if we go var and it's a dash dash ratio dash portrait. Ratio portrait. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. I've also added some fun like borders around border radius that kind of gives it this like, it's like, a, like gloopiness. Yeah, it's a wobbly, but, almost looks like a guitar pick shape to me. But if you want to go over to like the, um, what class is that using the, um, I think it's the avatar, is that? Probably. Uh, here we go. So border radius, var radius blob for, and I've recognized... Yeah, if we want to take that one off and you can like just see what it's actually doing. You can okay. see, like, even, it was a square before, now it's got that portrait ratio. Yeah. So despite the fact that the underlying image wasn't in this portrait ratio, we can use object fit under the hood and do some different things you can do like yeah 16 by 9 whatever you want to do this is i think a four by one okay <laughs> um but yes i like that let's keep that just okay. it's just my eyes staring at you <laughs> it haunts me in my dreams travis i go to bed at night <laughs> and there in my job dreams. if i'm not haunting your dreams <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, I, I go to bed, and there in my dreams are the eyes of Travis Waithmare watching out upon the infinite expanse like the eyes of T.J. Eckelberg, the optometrist from The Great Gatsby. It's <laughs> Travis Waithmare going, you're using bedrock, yes? <laughs> yeah, if you say bedrock three times, I'll appear in a mirror behind you. Or if you say web layout, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's like saying Beetlejuice. <laughs> yes. All right. <laughs> Uh, I am going to bring this back to uh, ratio portrait, though. So, um, awesome. So that that's what the frame is really good for. So it uh, it allows you to keep whatever media or content inside. It, this works with uh, like videos or whatever. It will it will force the aspect ratio to whatever ratio you want, or just whatever hit. You can just set the height and width, just like anything else, or let the parents set the height and width. Let it stretch and fill the content. So you have that flexibility to to let the layout choose its height or width, or you can set a ratio mm. explicitly. So so now the last thing I kind of want to go over here is 
we on the right hand side we have this content there's the top jokes yes which they're they're top the notch by the way top <laughs> notch <laughs> they are what's your favorite one so far in there oh man um nosy pepper's pretty good <laughs> gives jalapeno business yeah <laughs> so a uh, typical layout with cards is we we often want to do this like grid of cards and as it gets smaller then we want them to like collapse and move to other rows and optimize and there's two really kind of good strategies for that and it kind of depends on what the um it, it's just a matter of taste if lack of better terms of uh, what how you want to do your that layout to be what kind of atmosphere you want on your 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 web page if it's fun or if it's more of kind of formal so we're going to do kind of more of like i kind of kind of feels the more formal way which is we're going to do a grid okay so around each of the articles well, so if we go to the top the... jokes for, oh, let's just here. start with there yeah okay and then around right under top jokes there's i left an empty space there we can put a div there cool yeah, and then, and then come down, down here and yeah cool now in that div we're going to do data bedrock grid and i don't believe you're going to see anything yet because what we need to do is we need to set like a minimum item width we need to say hey what's the minimum width that these cards need to take up okay so it's just going to be and i'm, so I'm, I'm, I'm picking up style, yeah. yeah all right and it's, yeah, it's min item width. Min item width. And just to be sure. I really want to make sure that's explicit that it's the items, the the, the children that we're setting, not the outside mm -hmm. min width. So, um, and which one did I choose? <laughs> Let me remember. Um, let's do a size um, 20 RAM. Oh, okay. Just, let's just say 20 RAM on this one, actually. Just to show that you can do whatever you want. Yeah. And then what we also want is some gutters here because they're like right up against each other. So let's go ahead and add a gutter. And let's see here. Let's use, um, there's a space. And let's do, let me look at my notes here. Um, space XL. Oh, it's so var space, yeah, space XL, XL. like that. Hey, okay, that looks sharp. I like so it. then, yeah, as you get smaller, you can see they they go to a stacking layout, and we've kind of clamped it. But if we allowed it to keep growing, it will just keep trying to optimize as many columns as it can, as long as it maintains at least that minimum item width. Mm -hmm. And then, as you scroll down, though, you'll see like that last item only sits in one column. We have this blank space. Which is totally fine. Like if that's for certain types of layouts, that's what you want. Especially like I feel like kind of more formal. Yeah. But if you want kind of a more fun, loosey goosey style, what we want to do is is use what I like to call the column drop, which is as it drops to a new row, the columns reset to new. Like there's not a uniform column, and so okay. we can actually just like copy what we did above so just copy that div the data bedrock grid okay and let's add that above the food jokes this needs and, and that let's put the containing div right there yep okay. and then if we go up and change grid to column dash drops like this and then chain the min item width to basis. Like, oh, okay. Uh, like that. No, 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 sorry. Change the actual word min item width oh, to basis. Oh, I see. Okay. And so this, and so, what is this doing here? Should we, oh, column drop, singular, not drops. Sorry. You're good. Ooh, so okay, now, okay. So now what it's doing is we're like, hey, we're, we're I'm on a new row. As I drop to it, the columns reset. And so now there's only one column for this because that's the optimal amount. So it, once again, that it's totally up to you. We've kind of skipped over like doing the stack. I've 
the stack is probably the most common thing that we think of, but it's the one we always get rid of. So I kind of ignored it and it's the easiest to understand. Mm -hmm. But as you can see like now vertically, we just need some vertical space here and we could just do that with like, maybe we'll just do it real quick over yeah. the, the entire section here in the main. In the main, the main component. Oh, here's the main. Yeah, well, let's just add data bedrock stack. Data bedrock stack. And let's give it a getter of um, what is it? XXL. So space XXL. All right. Space XXL. Okay. So everything presumably. So will... between the top oh. rows, yeah, now we have a bigger space like right there. So... Nice. And then you can imagine doing that internally for each of the sections can also be a stack of its own. Mm -hmm. And anyway, yeah, so. Very cool. That, that's not everything, but I think that's kind of like catches a lot of like the idea of what Bedrock is designed to be. Absolutely. And it, it makes it very just explicit and. Um, you know, even when I was looking at like your styles, you're not applying a whole lot of styles. This, this isn't a system like bootstrap where, um, if you want to tweak anything, like you're just going to have to go in and override everything. Like it's a bunch of just really brief, but powerful rules for assembling these layouts. And that's super cool. So major kudos. Awesome. Thanks. Um, and so far, like I, I do get PR for this, but not as much as I would love to get. So I would love people to just yeah. start using this and breaking it to death and saying, hey, this is breaking this situation and, and making this even more battle tested. So 100%, like, please, everybody come out, start using it, start accepting P PRs. I'm probably the nicest, like, open source <laughs> maintainer in the world as far as things like that go. <laughs> Let me drop a link to that GitHub in the, the chat there because absolutely, like, go provide feedback and just, this this seems like one of those tools that um, starts off maybe as one thing, but then as more people start using it, you realize it, like, needs to slightly pivot, like, um, to, to be a, a more robust tool for more people um, in general. So, um yeah, absolutely. Please, please go use this. Let Travis know uh, what you think of it and what you found and how it can be even better and even better, like contribute uh, things. I'm, I'm sure, uh, I guess, what what is your favorite pull request you've received for this project? My my favorite pull request was actually someone was like, hey, this is a component, the real component. Um, I didn't create that. I've seen people use it, but I didn't really think of a good way that to use it. Like I've heard the, of the concept of horizontal scroll and like, I really don't like to make something that is really just like a prop version of what already exists. Like if the, if it's going to be a layout component, it needs to give you something that you can't get by just writing the CSS by yourself. Like, mm -hmm. and so I, even though I've seen it, I never really felt like it was really that helpful compared, but anyway, to make a long story short, um, someone said, hey, this is a component I use a lot. Um, and, and we went back and forth a little bit and we got a really good like component that I think really like gives you some good value. With once again, without adding too much and without being being something that I feel like has to be like overwritten and you end up regretting bringing it in. Yes. So Yeah. Well, very cool. Um and also just what is something that you've learned or has surprised you from your time working on Bedrock? The thing that surprised me is like that, honestly, like five years ago when I started this career change, I was a, I spent my career in finance, I was a compliance officer, and I made that career change. Like I was just happy then just to be working in code and enjoying it. But just to see like, making that like putting myself out there and not having it be thrown back in my face just how generally welcoming the community has been i've i have not had anybody yet knock on wood be like toxic in any of these situations or like this code sucks 
this is the stupidest concept in the world. I've, I've 100% had the opposite. They're like, I like what you're doing here. Let me help try to make it better. Here's some things you can do. And I would say that's been my, probably the coolest thing about this is that like, we're always fear like the negative side, but there's actually much more positive out there. And especially in the dev community mm -hmm. and the open source community. Awesome. Well, Travis, thank you so much for hopping on. I, I want to uh, shout out places where folks can find you. So let me put once more the link to your um, your Twitch because you've been streaming your progress on building this very li uh, library. Um, is it? It's layout singular, I believe. Um, yeah, building bedrock layout. You also you tweet. Um, that's a, a good place to find you. Um, Anywhere else I should, I, I, I guess I'll, I'll share another link to your, um, your blog. Um, and, and yeah, anything else I should send people to. And honestly, like just go to lunch.dev discord server. I haven't felt the need to create my own discord server because like I'm always at lunch dev and chances are you'll probably get better feedback. Just jump into lunch dev. If you have a question about bedrock, um, if we ever get to the point where there's a big community, maybe we'll move over, but I, I'm just going to like totally still. Michael Chan's community for a while until, until then. <laughs> mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, um, thank you again so much. Um, so if you've enjoyed this stream and you'd like more like it, um, please go follow Semantics on Twitter. Um, next week, we might not be streaming on Tuesday, uh, but instead at Friday, on, on Friday at um, 2 p.m. Central, we're going to have Jim Drury on. Um, Jim is going to be coming on to talk about accessibility for responsive design. So how do you balance responsive web design with accessibility, especially insofar as people who need to zoom and magnify the page? So if that's something you're interested in, absolutely follow Semantics here on Twitch and on Twitter. Um, and, and that's how you'll, you'll keep apprised of all the streams. Thank you all so much for being here. Uh, thank you, Travis. Stick around, chat. We're, we are going to find someone to raid, see if we can keep these raids going. Um, and, and yeah, see y'all around. Bye, y'all.